Namaste yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today I'm gonna to give you a short tutorial on triangle pose. So triangle pose is very common. It's in a lot of yoga practices and more often than not, students are not doing it with proper alignment just because it is really easy to fall out of alignment in triangle pose. And especially if you mainly practice at home, um, it can be hard to know whether or not you're doing it correctly, right? A lot of us think that the goal of triangle pose is to, you know, touch the floor and it's really not. So if you've noticed, I have my mat up against the wall because I'm going to show you how you can use the wall to figure out at home if you have the proper alignment in this pose. And you might also want to have a block as well. So if we begin from the foundation up, my front foot is pointed to the top of the mat, which is great. And my back foot is roughly parallel to the shorter edge of the mat. So for me, for my body and my hips, this is what feels the best. I like to have my foot, my back one, parallel to the shorter edge of the mat. For some people, turning the toes in a little bit is going to feel a lot better. You'll kind of know right away based on how this feels in your knee. For me, as soon as I turn the toes in, I feel a little twinge in my knee, so I know this is not appropriate for me. In triangle pose, we're trying to keep everything, the entire front of our body, should be facing the long edge of the mat. So very often, what I'll see here in triangle pose, students will just kind of dump all of their weight forward and they try to get their hand to touch the floor. So look what happens. My back hip is rotated in, my shoulder is folding down, and my spine is not straight at all, and it's causing a lot of pinching in my shoulder and in my neck. So yes, I'm getting a big stretch in my front leg when I'm doing it that way, but I'm missing the point of the pose, which is elongation through the spine, dynamic activation through both legs, not just the front one, and length from one hand all the way to the other. So there's a lot that goes into this pose. Starting from the foundation, lift up through the arches of the feet. So you don't wanna be digging your toes into the mat, it doesn't help. Then keep going up the legs, and now pull up through the quads so that both kneecaps are lifted. Especially those of you who are very flexible and maybe hyper flexible, the tendency here is going to be to lock the knees and hyper extend. So you're kind of sinking into the joint and then moving down. Think of keeping just a tiny little micro bend and really activate and pull up through the quads, pulling up and lifting up through the kneecap just to make sure your joints are staying stable. So if everything is facing towards the long edge of the mat, already from here, I'm trying to encourage my back hip to press open. What it's going to want to do, the lower we go, the more that back hip is going to want to start spinning down towards the floor. So if I'm pulling up and lifting, activating and reaching out through my arms, first I hinge from my hips. So I tilt my hips back and lengthen my arm as much as I can. Already checking in, am I starting to lock into the joint? As far as you go, checking in with that back hip to make sure it's not starting to rotate down towards the mat. So pushing and rotating it out, and then making my way into triangle pose where I'm trying to align my right shoulder directly over the top of my left shoulder. So you'll notice my fingertips are not touching the floor here. They're about at my shin. I feel a big stretch through the right side of my waist. Of course, a big stretch into my front leg, but I also have a lot of length from the crown of my head to my tailbone. So as if someone was pulling my head forward, pulling my right arm up, pulling my left hand down, pulling the legs away from each other. So there's a lot of dynamic activation in this pose without locking into the joints. When you're in triangle pose, I like to imagine that I'm trying to bring the bottom rib cage to face up towards the ceiling. So almost as if you were trying to face up towards the sky and leaning back even more than you think you need to. And that's how you'll be able to get into your triangle pose with proper alignment. So this is where the wall can come in handy. If you want to practice it and say, I don't know if I'm rotating in or out too much or if I'm really getting it, I'm just gonna do the other side to balance things out. So if you go against the wall, if my glutes touch the wall, 
Uh, there's like maybe one inch between the wall and my heel. That's fine. Front foot, front heel aligns to the middle of my back arch. I'm a little bit of a narrower stance in my warrior two, back foot parallel to the shorter edge of my mat. I'm lifting up through the arches of the feet, pulling up through the quads, not locking my knees. As I reach my arms out, I'm going to hinge from the hips. So leaning into the wall, everything is touching, even as I'm starting to extend. And then once you find that depth of the pose that works for you, you wanna roll that top shoulder back enough so that you end up leaning fully against the wall. So as soon as you notice that you're unable to get your top shoulder against the wall, usually that's because you're too low to the floor. You can also do this with a block. I really encourage students to practice just either holding onto the shin, placing their hand on a block on the highest level, or just uh, pressing the back of the hand against the shin. That's usually the option that I do or against the calf, because it does activate quite nicely here. But this is what you want to keep in mind when you're practicing your triangle pose. So if you want to do it with the wall, just keep reminding that back hip and that back shoulder to rotate and press back. If I had two little flashlights right here on my hip bones, I would want them to shine forward the entire time. If I had two little flashlights on my shoulders, I would also want them to be flashing forward the entire time. This is like a little trick they used to tell us in ballet when I was growing up. So rolling that back hip, rolling that back shoulder, right now everything is shining towards you guys. If I fall out of that alignment, all of a sudden my right hip and my right shoulder, those lights would be shining more towards the floor which is not what we want. So please practice this at home. Let me know how this goes for you. And I really like doing these pose tutorials. So if there are other yoga poses that you would like me to break down for you and give you tips and tricks for alignment, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. And in the comments, I'll post links to all of the other pose breakdowns I've done on YouTube, because I think I've done probably a dozen by now. So there are a lot already out there. Thank you so much. I hope to practice again with you soon. Namaste.